really here to hear how significant it is to have a prophetic voice, um, not just in this season, but period, right? And so I like this dynamic that God has set up. Uh, Kings Gate is one of my friends that, unlike most of my friends, um, didn't grow up as a church kid, right? And so as you all know, I'm a true true by heart true blue church kid and so the reality of it is uh, she's one of my one of the few one of few of my friends that actually did not grow up in that same dynamic so she's always brought a different perspective to my life and even to these notes of church religion and tradition because she was one of the ones you weren't just gonna pull in um just because you could holler and hoot one gonna happen she wasn't one of the ones you was just gonna pull in because you were popular she wasn't one of the ones that was just going to we you know how y'all say well you over my house you gotta go to church she'd be like well, i'm gonna go home she's one of those <laughs> hey. right? and so you have to appreciate those friendships right and so throughout the years because they talk about birds of a feather and all of that but she's always been that person that has challenged religion challenge tradition and challenge spirits i would also i would argue king's gate king's mm. gate challenge god like yo mm. if you really this big bad almighty being show me you right and you have to know king's gate personality to understand i believe that has been her prayers and i have i believe that it has been the boldness of that prayer uh, because i believe god can handle our wrongness right man can't god Absolutely. can i believe Absolutely. as she's grown as she's matriculated as she's mature it's been that prayer uh god look show me you that has literally propelled her and put her in such a space where i believe she's such an authentic voice when we're talking about church religion spirituality and so i want her to share her journey and then we're going to kind of break it up into a dialogue of just the significance of really a kind of like a beeline to how she got to this point that she now is and then we'll go from there my journey my church journey how you got to this point of where you at slim i mean church hey we'll kim start, we'll start with the church journey hey kim so i did not grow up in church as she said but i i, I went to church sporadically growing up um you know down in the country in uh in memphis somewhere I don't know where, but we went sporadically. And then <laughs> a couple times um, in high school, I went to a woman pastor. Interestingly, um, it was a woman pastor. And I was so fascinated about this woman pastor. And in my naive eye, I thought if you were a pastor, you had to be married. So I just knew there was a husband somewhere <laughs> with this woman pastor. And I was like, he has to be like a strong man to be married to a woman pastor. So I went to that church simply because I was just fascinated with a woman pastor. The church used to be packed and and I had never seen anything like it. But anyway, I didn't I went on to college and she right. All of my friends they went to church on Sundays. I went washing on Sundays. Okay. Everybody was watching Lifetime all day and, and I was washing and everybody else was at church. And I made sure that I went, I, I watched specifically because everybody else was at church and I knew no one else was going to be there. I just wasn't into it because all, a lot of the people that I knew from church were raggedy. The, 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 I guess, connotation of how a church person, a woman or man is supposed to be. So I wasn't feeling it and I wasn't into it. So I didn't go. Um, for some reason, I don't even know what happened. I just know when I moved to Atlanta after college, I, I was about that life. You know, I lived my life, college life, HBCU, went to Atlanta. I, I, I lived my life and I got tired of it. And I said, okay, I'm tired. I need something new. Let's go to church. Let's try church. Let's try God. Let's see what he's talking about. I end up choosing a church simply because, um, what was it? TSU had was doing some type of a recruiting event at a church and i was one inquiring about you know the place that they were doing it at and i saw the guy and i was like oh he looks young let's see what he's talking about on sunday so i went to church and he was young and i liked whatever he was talking about because i became a professional visitor for like a year the day he, he finally convinced me to join church well it was a, it's a huge church in atlanta now um, the day he finally convinced me to join, 
um, I remember the sermon. I never forget because he talked on the when they opened the doors of the church. He talked about how when we go to the club, when we go to Walmart, when we go to Target, any of these places that have a long line, or you know, you see the parking lot busy and full, we don't turn around. When we go in those places, we always we still go in. So if you don't have a problem with standing in line to go to the club, if you don't have a problem standing in line for whatever you need at Walmart, whatever you need at those places, you're going to get it regardless of a line and how many people are there. So I said, "Ooh, That's good. right." It was it, it convict. It convicted me. I said, that the man living in Atlanta, I stood in plenty of lines going to TSU. I stood in plenty of club lines, and I did not care because it was something in there that I wanted." And so I think it was about a good 80 of us who joined church that day because he convicted all of us. And then after that, of course, they encourage you to um, join a ministry. And I was like, I'm not joining no women's ministry. <laughs> I'm not about to sit and talk about my feelings all day because that's how I perceive women to be. So I joined the sports ministry where I can hang around little inner city basketball players all day every day and i did i was in church thursday friday saturday sunday every week for a long time and and this that's that's how my journey started <clears throat> and then i was getting deep in my word because in the midst of the, the the basketball oh hold on you stop you do it okay in the middle of basketball um, the sports, we had to have Bible study before we even jo jump on the court. You had to have Bible study. And so while we're, you know, the kids, it's for the kids, but who was sitting there eating it, soaking it up? Me, because it was just good. Bible study was good. So that's when I really got my foundation on, okay, you got to get in this word in Bible study where you can ask questions. And that was transformative for me. And then after that, so I have my own devotionals. I'm buying, you know, uh, books to learn deep, more deep into whatever, you know, I'm learning in Bible study and um, ended up, it was good, but then I needed more because I'm such a big personality. I'm such a assertive, aggressive, whatever these adjectives that people call me, I needed somebody who pushed back on me. Because I'm usually the strong and aggressive one. I'm going to tell you when you stink. And I wasn't having no one to tell me when I was foul. And your girl was foul. Okay. She still be foul sometimes. I'm just, uh, looking for that and a leader or just that's that's what you was looking for, period. I was looking for that, period. Gotcha. Okay. In, in period. Let's just start okay. with. Because yeah, okay. at that time, uh, the church is huge. So I didn't. I would. I um in the sports ministry, you know, we had a minister who was over us. So he was he was probably more of my spiritual father than my pat the pastor because church was like ten thousand deep or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I didn't see the pastor until church on Sundays. But I did my Bible study and everything else with the minister over the um sports program. I, I needed that someone, my peer, him or something. Some I needed that in somebody and I wasn't getting it. So let's so, let's slow this down. Okay. Right. So the first thing you you realize, and this is key on this journey, because sometimes people I feel like are like, well, how do you start this journey, right? And you saying as an adult, because she was in, you're in college, you needed something different. You realize you needed something different, right? So was that an auction? Was, was that after college? After college, you needed something different. It was after college. I was living in Atlanta then, and I had partied enough and went to the mall enough and went to enough restaurants. I was over it. I needed okay. something different. But so really, it happened organically along with maturation. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Keep going. Yep. So this was... Okay. So the first thing we want to kind of note here is this journey. Uh, her journey as an adult, as it was taking off, hit a crossroad of stay here or stay here. Right? And so mm -hmm. maturity helped her to move in the vein of let me try something different maturity helped mm -hmm. her move yes. maturity, maturity. Yes. Helped yes. her move Absolutely. into a vein not age nope not pressure from no. anyone 
No. Nope. Well, I'm a graduate. No, it wasn't even well, about my nope. yep. Helped her move into a vein of mm, need some different. Let me try this. Correct. Mm -hmm. I yes. don't want us to make it. Yes. Go ahead. Maturity. Maturity. Okay. Maturity. That's true. That's exactly how mm -hmm. it happened. And I was in church and got that Bible study. So mm -hmm. church was fine on Sunday for me. Okay. It was cool. You hallelujah shout. Yes, Pastor. What was transformational was sitting in that Bible study with them them inner city boys every Friday before you hit that court. We had right. that every Bible Friday. Friday. So while um and How they had us a that? What? How pivotal was Bible study? We got Tasha on here. Shout out to Tasha. Oh. TSU, baby. We repping. Because uh, we, <laughs> we want to make sure we break these nuggets down, right? So right. we know maturity is what started you on this journey. Mm -hmm. How Because So again, you're at a big church. Like, mm -hmm. it ain't, you, you know you needed something. You don't even yet know from who. But you're right. realizing that, okay, this Bible study thing, okay, I'm feeling this because it's helping me to grow. How critical was Bible study? Critical. Because from the very limited lens that I know of church people in church, period, all they talk about is Sunday. Go to mm -hmm. church on Ooh, Sunday. Yeah. You're going too fast. Here, say I'm that sorry. again. That, that's that's, that's what it was. That's what, I'm going to slow you down. Don't worry about it. Okay. Say that again. The only thing from my limited lens that I knew about church and church folks was to go to church on Sunday. That was it. That's, that's how all you hear people talking about. So that's here's all you that everything come out their mouth. Come to church on Sunday. Here you here 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 we have right and and I and I shared a look just a snippet of Kingsgate growing up and we didn't flesh it out for the sake of time, but. She's saying as a, not necessarily an unbeliever, but for someone who was not yet a part of this culture of the church, the only mm -hmm. thing she heard, her lens was that of, hey, Sunday, mm -hmm. when we get to Sunday, da ba ba, right? Yes. And so for her, for someone, again, not familiar, because we got to be intentional, right? We're talking about bringing and winning souls. We yep. sometimes talk from the lens of what we know, the experts yep. in this thing. We got to back it up and dump it, right? Yes. She only had saw, had heard about Sunday and how many of us are guilty of only being a Sunday Christian or only Absolutely. talking about a Sunday God. Girl, go on. Yep. Keep going. Yep. That's exactly. And all the people that I knew who went to church, which was a lot of them, they only went to church on Sunday. They never mm. talked about Bible studies, Sunday school. They, only talk, they, they invite you to come on free work. Right. You ain't never yeah. seen them do nothing else. No, definitely no like, outreach. Oh my God. Definitely no outreach. Just Sunday. No okay. Definitely no outreach. Definitely no Bible study. No Sunday school. No, nothing in between. Hell, I ain't even know about who's in choir. So, like, they literally only went to church on Sunday. <laughs> okay. You know, everybody me in the choir. Everybody, right. Okay. <laughs> so, that's the only lens I knew. So, here I am as a coach to these inner city kids. And I, the, the program in which the minister created the whole program was we come in, we had to have Bible study first. We do some type of life skill and then you hit that court. So we got three and a half hour, uh, three and a half hour practice, but the first hour and a half, two hours is Bible study and um, life skills. Mm. So this, and then I'm looking at it for me because I, I was, I, that was my favorite part. I'm in mm. Bible study like, ooh, ooh, give me, ooh, ooh, ooh. And then, mm -hmm. of course, I'm like, as a coach, please don't ask me to go up there yet. I ain't ready. So I was scared of that. But I was into it. Like, I I was there. Practice, I think, started at 530 or 6. Maybe I was there 15 minutes early every Friday. Okay? Wow. Because I had to get it. Go ahead. Go. No, go ahead. I wanted you to say that. Oh. Oh, I had so, to be there every... So that... So that, that, that 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 maturity led to so at, right now you're talking about the thirst the thirst for sure so i was it thirsty come from a relationship with a personality it didn't come no. from her being uh, a popular member we need nope. it, it didn't come from her having her name being called or being the nope. leader of a ministry literally nope. as she began to see 
um, and she began to build rather this thirst mm -hmm. um, for God's word, and she began to see ministry. Right? She yep. forget hearing about it. She wasn't even yep. a real part of it yet. She began to see it lived out, and it created a thirst. So this mature, I don't want y'all to miss maturity. Helped her get on this journey, and now by this 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 Bible study and studying God's word, and then that end up breeding a thirst in her. Yeah, so keep going. Am I right so and far? I don't, you are good. good. And the first look, the first uh scripture I learned was train up a child in the way he should go. <laughs> Talk about happy. Listen, yeah. I was happy because I knew one scripture, and that was the 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 mission of our whole ministry. So that was amazing. I love that experience. I would love to even create a duplicate of that program somewhere down the line, somewhere around here. But fast forward past that, I still needed more. I needed someone to, so I'm, I'm in the word now. So I'm reading the word myself, cool. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm not being shown the application. I'm not, being sh I'm not being rebuked for my stuff that I'm doing that's wrong that's going to do me. Hmm? So, Paul, do you think that was a matter because of the size of the church? You just wasn't yet fully all the way engaged? Or have you ever thought about the why? Why wasn't? Um, mm, no. I, I don't okay. I don't think that cause, because I'm, I was so new booty at the time. So, I don't think <laughs> so I don't I, these aren't things that I was vocalizing to anyone. So for all they knew, I had grew up in church. For yeah. all they knew, like this was a part of life for me, just like it was for them. They didn't oh, know that I was. I, they, they, they didn't know. They didn't know. So I was sitting there. Nobody asked. Asking questions. No, they did. No one asked me anything. They just assumed that that's what it was. You and got course, in where you got. You got in where you fit in. It. Not knowing this baby. This this baby. Well, this person, this adult, was a babe, an infant, yep. in, infant in Christ, in an infant, yep. in, 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 an infant across the board, not knowing because she got yep. in, she was smart, she's lively, became active, found her something to do, but internally, mm -hmm. she still had a level of prima, listen, and how many of us are yes. in churches? We yes. are 10 years. But yep. we serve, we active, we got perfect attendance, but our spirit mans are still underdeveloped. Yes. Ha! You nailed that. Come on, Doc. Listen, <laughs> listen. Hey, this is good you know, because this is why we even see this argument of the season saints. And then some yep. of us young people come in like, man, why y'all still on the ABCs of prayer? Right? Listen. Because they, they we sit in these church buildings and we have yep. the look, we have the facade, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we show up. And you assume, and we're all guilty. You assume by yep. that person there, and we don't even know because we've never taken the time to sit with them, have these kinds of conversations, ask questions, Absolutely. and really realize where's your spirit, where's your spiritual IQ? Right, right. So. And, and, and then there's a flip side, right? Hold on. There's a flip because then for those people that are active and engaged, the ones we see, and I'm one of those. And then when you do sit back with a question, well, you supposed to know, right? And, and sometimes it's those of us on the front line because some of us don't, do, don't know nothing else but to be active in church. That's how we were brought well, up. That's how we were taught, mm -hmm. right? But that doesn't mm -hmm. mean I don't still need pouring into Tasha Absolutely. Just did it. That's why I go to five Bible study. No, death to the day. I'm finna pour, 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 and I cannot receive. Yeah. And I realize I got I got the award for being the most present, the the most to serve. But on the inside, man, I went home in tears. Absolutely. And I couldn't even receive the word of God because I was somewhere working. Uh uh. Yep. Thanks. Oh, listen. Yes. 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 Guilty, Thanks. ouch. And, 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 and I ain't about that life because even in that ministry, listen, listen. And it was so interesting because the, the, I was running away from being like this deep or emotional, or whatever part of my Bible by mm -hmm. saying, I don't want to do women's ministry. And mm -hmm. I go into this full blown men <laughs> adult, and boy ministry, and mm -hmm. 
Who? Yeah, my like transformational. Like seriously, I don't know. I, I just can't imagine <laughs> what. So, like, oof. okay. <laughs> she was, uh, we ha- we have a this is this is so and her and her her became across her became a commonality right y'all have two different dynamics here church key I'm a preacher's key I grew up and I listen I'm talking about seven days a week right <laughs> and then you have someone who was no days a week right no. and I'm serving actively working know everybody in the church know every church at every church function not just my church all across the city congress right btu abc nbu all of this oh, here's somebody <laughs> as an adult post-college post-graduation coming into this thing we both meet at this place like this is i need more this what so we in the same boat i ain't mm. there my spiritual iq is somewhere hangling and hers is too, right? And how many of us can admit we 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 really we don't want to have these conversations because we'll have to come to the truth that you've been doing this thirty years and I've been doing it three months and we're in the same boat about the same. Thanks. Thanks. Go ahead. Go so ahead. yeah, I was uh I was into it. So um, you needed more. You needed more. I needed more. I needed okay. I needed more direct one on one contact or whatever. Okay. Walking through this thing. That's what I needed. Um because I was lighting in the word. Right. Cause um we had Bible study um at the church and I started attending that, but it wasn't where I could where raise my hand and ask questions and be like, uh uh-uh. because I, I ask questions and you know I go against everything. Right. So it wasn't like that. So I needed more of that one on one, like break this right. down. And I, I was getting a, I was getting it on a surface level in the Bible study with the kids, but you know, I need more. So ultimately I I started a business in PR. That's when I was in PR. And then my mentor at the time was like, um, you know, I didn't want to do like uh, entertainment PR or whatever. So, you know, talking to my mentor at the time, she was like, well, um, why don't you go back to Tennessee? I'm like, who, who going back to Tennessee? Not me. I had vowed that when I left, I was not coming back. Okay, <laughs> the devil is a lie. But you have a mentor for a reason, right? So you listen, right. like okay, well, well, let me put it in the back of my head. Since she said something, let me, let me, let me put it in the back of my head, and then, but it kept gnawing at me. So okay, let me pray on it. Okay, so then after I prayed on, I'm said, all right, well, I listen. I'm about to go to Memphis for a week. And if I go off to Memphis for a week and not be distracted and I can get some work done, I'm going to take that as a sign that I'm supposed to go back to Memphis. So I came to Memphis. I, I think I called you, Sean. You had just started Rich Ed around that time. You was new at Rich Ed. I knew like a handful of people who were doing business. So I came in town, had meetings, went, I think we went to a couple networking events or whatever. I was able to, you know, do not be distracted and do some work and i said okay god i guess your girl headed back to Shelby county so i eventually came back and so maturity we got maturity we have the study of god's word a thirst and now mm-hmm. a transition mm-hmm. and right. no that my mentor was just business mentor she wasn't a spiritual mentor right. none of that it was just strictly business purposes because i was trying to navigate a business world that I had ever navigated before. So when I moved back to Memphis in these streets, trying to figure it out in the business world, um, Sean, you was living in Whitehaven with Dorothy still. You the only person I knew who still lived in Whitehaven. I was back in Memphis at my parents' house. They were in Whitehaven as well. So I'm like, well, I need to work out. Let's go walking. I'll call her. We started going walking in the little park in Whitehaven. That is where the truth trail developed. Originated. Lord uh-huh. Jesus. This is at the beginning of Sean's walk with, uh, or her wrestle or walk with, with ministry. Lord Jesus. And this is me saying, so my prayer, I, I, I always, I, when I tell the story, I say, well, I pray that I, um, about, about business and that I came back to Memphis for business, but actually it was a delay, oh, oh, sorry, an answered prayer because I pray for the spiritual growth. 
I pray for somebody to be able to get tough with me, you know, walk with me one on one, uh, rebuke me, all of these types of things. And Lord Jesus. So it wasn't, so God didn't see you a pastor yet or first? No. He sent me Sean. <laughs> May the Lord watch. <laughs> you remember this, and I and I frame that because so often we, we have put a lot of pressure on people finding church homes mm -hmm. and finding leaders. Mm -hmm. And the reality of it is that may not be your first stop. Yep. Right. It was not mine. Now she'll eventually get to this, but I, I want to slow walk it just so because you never know who's listening. And I right. know that I have a lot of people. My audience is very. Uh, intellectual but again I don't know who's listening at the right. end of the day and Absolutely. so I want to be intentional around how I'm framing this conversation so if this is slow for my typical audience whatever I'm not apologizing right. this may be for someone who really has some struggle and some questions right mm -hmm. and when you go to God right because we do push we in souls for Christ come to church mm -hmm. be at the church mm -hmm. find a pastor mm -hmm. What, what my friend is admitting to and, and sharing is that that wasn't her first pit stop. Her first pit stop, first of all, it was uproot, uprooting her, right, uh, yep. from her home at the time mm -hmm. that she had been away from, well, that she, well, sending her back to a place that she hadn't been to in years. In 12 years. 12 right, years. 12 years. And then shifting her back to her original hometown right mm -hmm. and even though this was her prayer god then said okay let me then align your path with a friend who's also yeah. man you gotta love yep. I'm about to tell yes who, who yes at the same time same in time yep in <laughs> the beginning of her journey yep of ministry <laughs> and and go back and, and if y'all been watching it, she said, hey, Dorian, if, if, she said she her prayer was, I wanted something more, right? Yep. I wanted somebody to be like, hey, boom, you foul, you raggedy, right? And the first stop was not church. No. <laughs> the, <laughs> the first stop was not per se nope. a pastor. Nope. Not the not then however it was some it, go ahead finish go i'm that shout no 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 i'm done for the day that right there shout do you hear this tasha god is so cold ain't it oh he's so cold he knew and and and, 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 and she always said i was her practice right but at the same time no you i was your practice right use my practice Cause uh, I was so raw with it. I have oof. since mild, but at the sun, and I don't want to miss yes, this. You had, we, we, she was good in Atlanta chilling. I got my basketball team. I got my ministry thing. They still don't know why I'm dying though. Spirit, spiritual, <laughs> right. still is in the special ed domain. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, God, let me tell you, I need a little bit more. And her first stop was not right. that of a church or a pastor. It was her friend. Go yep. ahead. Yep. And that's where on that truth trail, Sean laid it into me. I'm crying. I ain't want to talk to her. Baby, you got to be careful what you pray for because you might get it. Okay. And if you get it, you better be ready for it. Okay. Oh, Tasha, just, ooh, listen, this is so good. What she say? I can't. He said, see it wasn't that. a church building because you are a church all by yourself, Sean. The, the power in that is we have to realize when God is crossing our paths with people. Listen, you, 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 and, and we didn't know this then, right? We were just my right, heart was back right. in the town, like we going exactly. walking, right? We out there, exactly. like when he walking fast, when he sweat, we were walking in the so, right? I'm not doing no, we so, weren't doing no cardio. We was doing Christ, right? We were, like we exactly. know now that yep. that was me. Only prayer, right? Yep. What the hell to that. do? Like three hours, we just right. slow. Ain't no sweat, nobody. Everybody walk past her like this. We just like yeah, hey, right? So <laughs> the, the reality of it is, we never know, right. and especially in times like these, you don't know how God is putting people together, sending people right. in certain ways, and that's why we have to take relationships 
encounters and moments so seriously and we have to be about our father's business because guess what what right. what would have what would have looked like if when king's gate or when tj was brought back to memphis showing one where she was supposed to be Woo! yes yes go yes go yes well you were out of line true, yes. true trail okay go Okay. Keep going. So we went on trail and oh she was she was knocking me inside my head spiritually. My little heart be broken, my feelings hurt every day. We went like Monday through Friday. After she mm. dropped Maddie off at school, we were at the park. So we were early in the morning, crying tears. I'm mad at her all day. I don't want to talk. I barely want to see you tomorrow. But this is what yeah. I asked for. This right. is what I asked for, and that's what I kept having to tell myself when I'm praying or fasting. And she was ruthless then. Hear me, y'all. Y'all get this mild, toned down, really cute Sean. This is early in her ministry, so she's still part heathen, a little Christ in her. So I was getting the raw, oh my God, listen. But it's what I needed. What There's I mean. no other way I could have received it than the way that I received it. And the only person who could know to do something like that is God. 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 Because that's God. what I that, that's one hundred percent what I needed to push me. Mm, I said I'm still real. And and this is not about Sean and TJ. This, right. This is literally. It's so, it's so much bigger. I'm not a thug. Tasha said I'm thug. <laughs> <laughs> it was so she was too mild now. Y'all ain't like, talking about what, nothing. Like, y'all don't y'all wasn't getting what I was getting one on one so, what, every what, day. What's so powerful this is because, and here's here's the blessing for somebody that's on my end. This is why mm -hmm. authenticity wins, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Because again, I was TJ's answer prayer in that season. So she didn't need me to be mad. She didn't need me to be calm yep. and quiet, Sean. She needed the Sean she encountered then. Absolutely. And that's why those of us that carry the calls and the anointings and the greatness and the mantles, we have to be exactly how God has fashioned and designed us to do. Hear me. If you're walking with God and he has given you an assignment, he's going to mature you when he's ready. He's going to yep. take you to another dimension in him when he's ready. He's going to shift your character when he's ready. He needed me to be bold, ignorant, loud, ruthless, and a thug for TJ in that season. Don't miss that. Yes. Don't yes. miss that. Yes. Somebody out here who always yep. get told, you to this, you to that. You God going to use yep. all them tools. All, all of them add up. All you're too loud, them. you're too crazy, you're too bold, you're too radical. God gonna add all them tools up and it's gonna equal God. It's gonna equal out. It's gonna balance out. So as much as I want you all to hear King's Gate TJ's story, I don't want those of you who's like, but what about the Sean's out there? What about the right. me's out there? How do you encounter? Right. You don't even have to worry about that because you will birth your destiny. And I Absolutely. believe it's somebody on this feed today that needs to be reminded. All, all your tools, God will use your ruthlessness, your thugness, your hypocritical self. He'll use your ratchetness for his glory, period. Oh, facts. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go yes. ahead. And all of it was needed, necessary. And <laughs> I'm telling you, there's no other way. I, there's no other way that I could have received, period. I want to say something else. Yes. Go ahead. I want, I, I want y'all. Hey, Shara. Girl, this is good. You blessing me. Hey. Love you. Let me say this. T TJ is older than me. Yep. 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 And listen, I ain't a bug TJ learning from is older nobody. than me. This is not about age. Absolutely. TJ is older than me biologically, right? Mm -hmm. TJ and I had very different upbringings. Very different. We mm -hmm. met at the Hillcrest High School, 4184 Grayson yes, Drive, Memphis, Tennessee, 38116, yes, home yes. of Eric the Viking. Truth is, yes, Lord. TJ was my brother's friend. I stole her. Right? <laughs> so we got to shout out Phil because she wasn't even in my Come class. Come on, Phil. Uh, P right? P right? And so she's older now having to 
position herself. God has now positioned herself with, with a youngin to receive from. What does that require, people? Humility. Yep. And how many of us miss God, missing Christ, missing moments of ministry because we're looking yep. at the natural side of things, biology, chronologically, timing. Okay, you're going to miss your blessing. Facts. Keep going. Keep going. And I wasn't about to miss mine, okay? Keep going. I wasn't about Keep to going. miss mine. Keep going. This is good. This is good. Yeah. This is so good. So we walked the, the truth trail and um, finally it was time to find a church. So here I yeah. go. Looking for a little church home in Memphis. Yeah. Now, interestingly enough, all the people that I knew went to church as youngins, they weren't going to church as adults. Mm. Wow. I don't know why. So I had to, you know, just randomly find these places of where to go to church. Sean invited me to her church. Where were you at the time? I was at Ebenezer at the time. Okay, I visit. I'm not. I don't, I don't. Something didn't appeal to me about Ebenezer. Whatever. I don't know what it was. I initially was going to choose Brown. Matter of fact, I did choose Brown. But my cousin, I'm sorry. No, my aunt told me that she was like, "Why don't?" So I finally told my family that I was looking for a church. I also had a cousin who was a pastor out at Fraser. That was too far, and it was too small, and it just didn't appeal to me either. <clears throat> It just didn't seem like it just, uh, no, it just didn't work for me. So, uh, my aunt uh, suggested, why don't you go to my granddad, his book name, Bubba, rest in peace, Bubba. Why don't you go to Bubba Church? First of all, I grew up, even though I've been gone 12 years, I grew up with my grandparents, came home, visit, talk to all the time. Why didn't I know my grandfather went to church? Mm. The only people in my family that I knew went to church was, was the, the family that was the pastor and the first lady. Mm. Those were the only people I knew in my family that went to church other than funerals, of course. So I said, Bubba, go to church? I didn't even know my grandfather went to church. And then furthermore, he was with my grandmother while she didn't go. But that's another mm -hmm. story. So I was like, well, what church he goes to? And then he was like, it's Riverside, right there on, on 3rd Street. And I'm like, oh, it's one in the neighborhood. Even better, right? So better. I, I go to Riverside. Mm. Oh, it's over. This is this mm. is this, this this is I'm staying here. We got the young pastor. He preached some. I don't even know what he preached, but it was good enough for me. They got a mm. gym, so they mean basketball. So listen, so these are how I'm, I'm figuring out what I need in, in my church that's gonna appeal to me. I need a young yep. pastor who I feel like can relate to whatever I got going on in my life, some way, way or another. They got this gym, so we'll be able to do some more outreach for these little inner city boys. Cool. Um, I think I went a couple of weeks before I joined. It was. I finally joined. Like it, it was probably like the end of the uh, like I don't know October, December, November, December when I was attending. I joined like that January, whatever year that was. I can't remember. And I joined, and it was amazing. It was great. We, you know, they talked about. We went to Bible study on Wednesdays. We had spiritual growth, i.e., uh, Sunday school on Sundays, and I was there every day. Eight o'clock service. Nine o'clock Bible uh, spiritual growth. I was uh, we had noon day Bible study or the six six thirty seven whatever evening service. I was there. I was into it. Sean transitioning church at the time. <laughs> Paul and I another okay. another another as my parents still were called a paradox. Mm -hmm. Where I would where I. <laughs> the place the she transitioned to Memphis got who we we start doing our thing we were always True friends true. but of course our friendship took on another form Absolutely. and then the place that I then that God would then transition me to became the church her new church home why yep. y'all listen y'all don't want to have church with me listen <laughs> <laughs> Yep. So that's how I, also I, you know again divine encounters relationships matter because again God will use this same relationship this same dynamic not to just usher her to her what's next but usher yep. me 
into mine, which is also why you should never feel any kind of way sowing into the people of God and doing what God has called you to do because he ain't going to ever leave you hanging. Keep going. Never. Yep. Keep going. Yep. That's Keep it. going. Nope. <laughs> Listen, that, mm-hmm. that'll preach. All by itself. All, All by itself. It. So we in Bible study. We, I, we, uh, I invited her to come. She rocking and she got her life too, basically. We can't. No, no, no. We was at Sunday school. No, I was like Sunday. I was coming about Sunday school. Uh, I'm like, we had a dynamic Sunday school teacher. That thing was so Miss Janet. Sunday school. Miss Janet. Again, we have so many, and I get it. We have so many churches that have moved away from Sunday schools, and we got a small group. And I ain't knocking it. I'm not knocking the trend. I'm not knocking modernization, nor am I knocking shifts in how we in practices. What I'm saying is, you talking to two products of Sunday school. Sunday she school. She was a full fledged adult post yep. reg- post college. We ain't talking about twelve year old in the sunshine banging. An nope. adult who clearly was because if you hear her story all the way back, she said I needed bi- Bible study. Y'all, she ain't mentioned preaching yet. Lord, have Not mercy, yet. Jesus. <laughs> so what, I just need for y'all to frame this. She ain't mentioned <laughs> preaching yet. She's mentioned, though, her thirst, her transition, her needs for more, the study of God's word. And here she is now in this new place, right? Young nope. preacher. She ain't, we ain't even name the name yet because I don't even know him like that yet. I'm oh, in school. <laughs> then she brings in me. I'm now in the church via Sunday school and I join. Go. Yep. Go ahead. But keep going. Fast forward. Yeah. Sunday ahead. school. Miss Janet, young, fabulous, gorgeous, chocolate, like the the prototype, pretty much of of like what I would want a Christian woman to like. She, I love her. Okay, and she was everything I needed and more. Like, and she did not. She knew that word. She gonna tell you when you she just steal everything I needed from an older woman. And then what what I loved even more was that she she was gonna tell you that she messed up too. Yeah. Now the how honesty. many church folks honesty gave from the same. go on take from the you that they messed up too? Still to this like at that moment. Not that they messed up five years ago. The honesty the years prior. The honesty huh? of the same. Yes, that I messed up this weekend. This is what happened, and I had to get on my face and, and repent, and this, this, and that. And I it, it helped me in this Bible study, and blah blah blah. Like, how many people were doing that? Mm. Listen, when I tell you the upgrade was real, <laughs> the upgrade in Sunday school Bible study was real. Okay, we got our life in Miss Janet. Did. We did uh, Sunday school class. Okay, and when they tried to switch it up, I wasn't going. <laughs> Okay, but but what's so but I'm in and some of so my boldness kind of was coming out too because I remember when they tried to switch it up where I think it was like every six weeks you go to a new class, new teacher, whatever. So I call myself, let me try to be obedient in this, right? So I go to this, uh, it was a, a class where some seasoned saints were, they're doing Bible study and uh, or Sunday school, spiritual growth class. And there, I'm the youngest one. No one is in there under 60 years old, okay? And I'm the youngest one in there. And they're talking about, uh, I think one one woman was talking about how she can't get her kids or grandkids to go to church. And she, you know, and these young people, and they don't want to come to church. And, you know, so they're going, uh uh-huh. Unmoved. I'm sitting in the class like okay listen i ain't got the church etiquette thing going still i still don't have to this day so whatever i was like i I let it go on for a little while and then i said listen have you ever told them why you went to church Mm. have you ever like talked to them about when you messed up and the mm. what the the scripture did for you, or what prayer did for you, or what fasting did for you? Have you ever talked to them about when have you messed have up? Have you told them your story? Ooh, exactly. Have you been? Have you, told, like, have you been the Bible? Have you been a living exactly. depiction of this God? Exactly. Did you swear? Or did you just tell, or did you just tell them you need to go just because I said yes. so? Yes. No, no, no. That doesn't work, sweetheart. 
obviously, because you're in here complaining that they don't go to church. But maybe if you told them when you was out here in these streets with these dudes and messing up, maybe they'll be like, oh, grandma, really? What? You know, they'll pull up a chair like, okay, yes. what happened? Yes. And, and then Jesus did what? God did what? Oh, right. let me go. Let me go to that right. place where you have figured it out because I know you yeah. came through it. And I'm going through it right now. Right. And but you don't relate right. anymore. Because here's where y'all, y'all, listen, what my, what she, she, she brushed past it. And this is why I think our friendship has survived, right? Which is a whole nother lie that hit our friendship took was because she got to see her friend literally re, re, front row seat to God working in her life, right? So as her friend, Lord have mercy, a part of my responsibility became making sure that my life matched what was coming out of my mouth. Yep. Because there was a soul as close to me as one of my closest friends right there watching me to live a life pleasing to God. I couldn't afford to live raggedy. My Lord. And she would tell you that all the time. I could. The blood ain't going to be in my head. The blood ain't going to be in my head. I can't remember you remember that. Oh, baby, you say it 30,000 times a the day. The blood ain't going to be on my hands. Hey, we want to promise here that blood ain't going to be on my hand. Listen, you can take it or leave it. This, this, listen, wait. Come on, TJ, help the people. That's April. Listen, y'all, this is really <laughs> good because. A million. Your, listen. Times. You don't have to. Cause she wanted to tell, cause she gonna tell you when you messed up, when you was foul, you was outside of the world, you were out of order. She gonna tell you whether you do it or not is up to you. But she put it out there on it's on file, on paperwork in the file that said I I told her God. Now whether she listened to God, they ain't listen. The blood I'm ain't on my sleep today. Period. <laughs> I'm going to sleep. Tasha said your assignment was to be responsible for your accountability. That's so good. There, we have a responsibility to one another. My my poor pit was my friendship. Yep. That was that that was my audience, my friends. Right? That's why I don't have to be thirsty now for no platform. Man, I got friends. Some of which ain't wasn't where I was at and need whatever Jesus I got at the time. Right. Right? And so how man go. go. <laughs> This so good. So we we at Riverside. Both of us are at Riverside. Y'all listen. Pause. Can we shout out the good Reverend Doctor George the Lewis? Doctor He had Parker. both of us in the same time. At the same time. Now the Let's blessing go. was she went to eight o'clock and I went to ten. <laughs> I did. When we when we, we would go to church, the same service. service all over. Whole another thing. Keep going. Keep going. Keep listening. Like. So we shout out yeah. the good Reverend Dr. George Lewis yeah. and Lil Rock. Dr. George L. George George L. Come on. So, so yeah. we at Riverside. Um, we at Riverside. TJ, very active. Yep. I'm there. We both just. And our life actually went because she was in out, outreach. I do all this other stuff. Hang with the old <laughs> women. I'm trying to figure out. I'm, I'm really in transition still. So now. The, the place the placements have turned a little bit because now she's leading me because she's now been in this new space longer than I have she has relationships with these people I'm coming in don't know really where I'm at because because I'm wrestling with this call have not been licensed or anything and I'm still like God I'm about to be done with your church people right they mm -hmm. is not trying to hear no loud mouth girl and I'm wrestling with this call so I now myself am looking for safety and refuge and I found it in the same person who months prior was looking for herself. My Lord. Mm -hmm. My Lord. My Lord today. Ooh. Go ahead, Free. Go ahead, Isha. Just thinking. <laughs> what you wow. got some poems? No, I was just thinking like with, with the, the little boomerang or whatever, the little ping pong, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I back and forth. Thinking. Back and forth. Yeah. Back and forth. That was interesting. Man. Okay. That, that yeah, is. So um yeah so and, fast and, forward fast forward fast forward we both at riverside not long 
help Lord. <laughs> pastor Parks leaves. Mm -hmm. We get a new pastor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Press play. Robert S. Harvey. So we've been talking about pastors. Now we're gonna talk about the pastors, right? <laughs> Robert, you somebody said I thought she quick it. Like, listen, she <laughs> 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 Robert S. Harvey enters the conversation. So, mm. Mm. Uh, mm. Riverside is what Wait a minute, Tasha do. said, and the ball, the ping pong, you said the ping pong analogy. Uh -huh. Tasha said, and the ball is God. Oh, come through, Tasha. Come on, come on. But our eyes were on God. Listen, can you allow God? Listen, can you allow God? Come on, bring it on home. <laughs> <Yes, it. laughs> oh, can can you allow? Can you can you submit yourself and humble yourself to be the paddle that God uses on a ping pong mm. thing? Mm. Mm. Can can you, you ride it? But you want to be right or you want to be the left? Which one? Right we one? Right the left. Can you be the paddle though? That has mm -hmm. to stay ready in motion because that ball coming back and you got to be ready to act. Come on, man. Go. Yes. Ooh. Go. So, into the pastor. Um, real thought is very traditional Ooh, in a wait. sense. Um, and they, you know, had these old school rules or a way they did things, and that ain't my cup of tea. I ain't grew up in church again. I don't know the etiquette. I don't know the right, whatever, whatever. I was even told at one point that I couldn't even be over a ministry because I don't do church talk. I don't know yeah. church talk. Now I'm qualified. Yeah. I don't know yeah. stuff that they were doing. I know how to do it, did some, and 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 flip it over time five, ten times. Yeah. But because I ain't know church talk. They told me I couldn't be over ministry. Who that sound like, T? Again, growing in God, transition, new church, been there a while, but because she did not get in with the church etiquette, church ways, she was denied access to church leadership. Yep. Yep. So now we about to miss talent, skill set, energy, thirst, excitement, and brilliance. Because of tradition. And. And. We're going to talk about maturity. Because. Luckily at that point. I knew the reason why I came to church. You know for God. Okay. But so that could have very well. Went a derailed lot of Into that church hurt. Yeah. And I don't want to come back. Because I ain't yeah. in leadership. But y'all denied me or whatever. That lady who, who denied me told me I had to sit under that lady another yes. year or whatever. We will yes. reconvene and come back. But let me tell you about my God, though. My <laughs> God. Like that. Come on. Tell you about my God, though. Okay? So, enters Robert S. Harvey. The, yes. the new doctor Robert S. Harvey. He comes <laughs> in. Yep. And he does his evaluation on all the ministries. He talked to everybody, do his thing. He find, asked me why I ain't leading it. Mm -hmm. He said, mm -hmm. he said, what? <laughs> Let me dismantle the whole thing and we're going to start all the way over. <laughs> he dismantled all that book. He did. He did. All of it. He did. And let he me did. start all the way over. And I was like, and was able to receive what we, like, because you, you joined later. We yeah. all were at the table. We all, get, like, it was, he is brilliant on his own. He is. So the fact that he recognized my own brilliance and my lane in my my way of how I do things. My authentic me and all of my non-church etiquette whatever way he still saw something in me and gave me the space to let me flourish accordingly. And guess what? I did. Can I pause Oh. Get the chair, throw the chair. Come on, throw it. Here's what's key with what with what she just said. The power in what she just said, literally, because is this notion of okay. 
in my from my lens, this was your first encounter with a, re, a re, with a relationship with a leader. Yep. Can I argue? It was. No, that you one hundred percent fair. That's why I said into Robert S. Harvey. So yes, we should have been on this journey now. How many years? What's this about three? Mm, well, in Riverside, probably something like no, that. Yeah, from from Atlanta. Oh no! Oh, it had been maybe it might have been a little more than that. Maybe maybe about five. Maybe five years now, y'all. Maybe five years, and she's just now hitting this notion of a dynamic at, with a leader, pastoral leadership, right? Mm -hmm. Enters in Dr. Harvey that has a brilliance and a lens and sees in this person wait a minute pause let let let, let, let me do something with this right how many of us are on journeys or how many individuals are on journeys that it's it's such a gap between not everybody go immediately into these spaces having that pastoral dynamic and that right. pastoral relationship yeah. and what what tj has shared with us is there were some other things that happened long before she mm -hmm. even got to this place of saying you my you're you're showing me or you're depositing in me mm -hmm. nuggets of that of a pastor that of a leader yep. that of what yep. i desire right yep. now God is God. So we honor the transition. We honor what happened mm -hmm. in Atlanta. We honor mm -hmm. what happened even before she became a member of Riverside. But we five years in the game before I'm really able to say, yo, you, me and you, this is what we doing. This is what this whole sheep shepherd dynamic looks like. Right. Yep. Yes. That's, <laughs> look. I don't That's the hard I don't want to miss I want, I want somebody to hear this for a lot of various reasons. A, so always for clarification. B, she still ain't said nothing about preacher. But then C, because I don't want anyone to be discouraged from their journey when it doesn't always happen like we may think or like it has been visualized. She five years mm -hmm. in, right? And nowhere do you hear of her giving up or quitting. It was a process. And we have to yep. be intentional i think not making this one size fit all and her she's sharing like look i was i was just trying to get to god that's it not through you not through you not through you i was just trying to get closer to god and i was just rocking with my journey as it unfolded yep yep yes yes but this, 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 this is yes heart yes heart. But having but Harvey's preaching was a hit. Oh yeah, like, of course. I, I wasn't he, gonna say that. <laughs> oh, baby, that <laughs> I, I mean, Harvey broke that thing down. Here's what I would argue. Here's what I would argue before you go there. My friend's ear had to be trained. Yep. Yep. To even hear. Yeah. Yep. The prophetic power. And the theological brilliance. Yes. And in, in, as someone from the outside looking in, God was was really like, here go your answer prayer. But I had to grow you up so in this mm -hmm. interim time, whether that was through hanging with me or having her own encounters or the Bible study, because I knew who was up ahead. And I knew yep. a firecracker was headed your way, and I didn't want him. I didn't want you to miss the fireworks show ooh, ooh, by not ooh. being here. Go at the river. Ooh, ooh. But see, <laughs> fireworks. Fi a fireworks show happened. A good one happened by water. Thanks. So by the time it enters in. Pastoral leadership, this dynamic, great preacher, all it is, someone that could speak life to her. My friend also had matured. Yeah. So that when God brought this in to meet that in, it, 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 it would be a both parties. He took time to prune both ends of this thing 
because mm -hmm. he knew when it finally came together, the fire that it was spark. It, mm -hmm. Truth be told, it's still lit to this day. Still yeah. lit to this day. Because go ahead, yeah. go ahead. I'll, that is all. That's, that's good, Kings Gate. Yeah, that's Our, good. Harvey was. One of the things I all the words that I all I'm always look listening for or trying to hear when people talk about their church is transformation. Okay, yes. what was the transformation? I you can great we can all read the word hallelujah amen. But what does the word do to transform your transform your life your, your thought life. process your perspective? Like what has the word done in application to your life? Like, what does that look like? Does that mean we're perfect? No. But what's the fruit? What? what you, ah, you know, I was, where's the fruit? Dude, let me, listen. We could have go somewhere. Oh, Lord. You <laughs> should be, if you sitting under some leadership, that should show. Thanks. I, my, I told my pastor this other day. I know he, he be laughing at me, y'all. Y'all pray for my pastor. They might think <laughs> I'm a gang. Look, I'm your fruit. You know mm -hmm. why you should be shouting? Because look at what I'm producing as a result of your teaching. Period. 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 That's why every time my nine get called, you should be like, hey, that's my dog. Absolutely. That's my girl. Because guess what? A tree well, is what? only it's known. Right. Only known it's by right. the fruit right. that it bears. So not only am I a fruit of your teaching and your preaching, but I'm a fruit of this house. I'm Absolutely. that girl. And as Period. long as I am representative, and it's when I'm not, we should have a problem. We Absolutely. Should, if you are at church, as much as we say we are, you should be producing something. Period. Period. Transformation. And transformation. And, 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 and transformation is not static. It's fluid. It happens continuously. Continuously. It's your journey. Yep. It don't just stop with one. Right, it don't yep. start with one level of application. We're looking at Bloom taxonomy. We grow from understanding, knowledge, senses, evaluation. Like you, you move up. We talked about it. Spiritual IQ. Yes, we are baby food now, baby. We are meat and potatoes. So we're saying in this quarantine, we out of church. No, y'all ain't. <laughs> <laughs> If you who I got to go by, and if you, if I'm, if I'm looking at you as a representation of my God, I'm doomed. Number thorns on that branch, baby. No fruit. <laughs> Number no thorns. Ain't no, no cherries. Ain't no ever did fruit was ever on that mug. <laughs> Listen, you, you sure was some oranges on this mug? You sure? Ain't ain't no, no, tree. Tree. no, no, nothing. 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 Yes, God. Yes, God. Tasha says my worship was transformed, which opened me up to hear God, accept my calling to preach, and now even accepting my prophetic gift. Yes. Ooh, we we gonna we, we gonna see can we knock that in right quick? Come on. So Harvey enters, Harvey sets a fire. Mm -hmm. Um Shouts out to Minister Brown on this thing. Are, are you still in North Carolina, Minister Brown? I don't know if you back here or not. But shout out to Minister Brown who's just joined. Please join the conversation, Minister. We got a woman minister that I know where. We got Tasha on here. I know we got both Tasha's on here. We got. I, I want to hear from you, women ministers, because we had it your right. way. We're gonna get y'all. We're gonna pay y'all homage before we end. But this this thing so powerful though, because again, so we had Dr. Harvey. TJ has got him now. This pastoral impartation yep there is nothing more powerful i don't think outside of your parents than having a pastor in your life to speak life to you from a spiritual lens and to say daughter son child in you this is what i see and, and to me go ahead and for me to do that and be in and be authentically me and not have to be this anybody, anybody. of what this church person supposed to be when I'm talking to or dealing with yes. my past anybody else when when you receive impartation from a man or woman of God it should <clears throat> it should and if it's true if it's accurate impartation it will shift your whole entire life 
Mm -hmm. I don't care what nobody say. I, I deal to the day of, I got 13 different staff people to do it for me. I'm cool with that because I get it. It's about building capacity. I get it. Yeah. But do Absolutely. not discount the power of the father of the mother's voice to a child. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Ooh, excuse me. Listen. Listen. Go ahead. Got this, some more. Wasn't, Come on. this is because TJ was not a church kid. No. Nope. Right? So she nope. she needed, and the reality is we all need impartation from our parents. Mm -hmm. I may not be the best mama to Madison. God knows it's a daily journey. But I recognize it's important for her to hear her mother speak life into her. Absolutely. And I wrestle with this because even as a teacher, as a leader, as a coach, I even in ministry, I realize I carry that responsibility. And a part of that is impartation. Somebody is needed for Sean to speak life into them. And when I don't do that, I rob people of their neck, there was next. I robbed yep. them of a seed of development that's needed. Because yep. if I'm not gonna parent you, I need to be dismissed from your life. And I believe, yep. this is Sean talking, I believe a part of parenting is impartation. Mm -hmm. Listen. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's okay. Weird. Go. Tom, this is Minister Brown said that's it. If it's an accurate impartation, I listen. I, yes, it, I you, listen. You know, I'm big on that accuracy, accurate impartation. Um, Tasha, I had an impartation that was so strong from woman of God, I didn't know that I think about it nearly daily. Listen, you can get an impartation from anybody. Listen, my past is younger. This is Miss Dorothy out of Birmingham. My past is younger than me, and I look up to his teachers and impartation in my life. I think. Listen, ain't about no. Hey, Harvey was twenty. Harvey was nineteen. <laughs> Basically, yeah, he was. Harvey, Very many years younger than us. Harvey yes. was twelve when he came to Riverside. <laughs> Harvey was ten. <laughs> Harvey was Harvey fresh was out of middle school. 20. <laughs> Harvey was fresh out of middle school when he came. <laughs> Harvey is three feet. Then he's four feet now. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> impartation it's yeah. not about about you 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 will miss it and we hear all yep. the time the struggle with young with young pastors with their older members keep missing god right you got me messed up i don't care how yeah. old you are I don't give a I'm if, if they went to school with maddie in jesus name little pistol star bless your brother in jesus <laughs> Right. Amen. <laughs> <Hey, man. laughs> Listen, I April. Hey, he was Harvey was four. Harvey was missing. Harvey was with a Jimmy cup. That guy slaying the saints. Slaying. Slaying the saints. And if you didn't receive, it was only because of pride, tradition, yep. and religion. And somewhere yep. you wasn't able. Cause I don't care what nobody age ain't got nothing to do with this thing. Biology chronologically has nothing. My man's timetables have nothing to do with the moves of God. Period. 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 Your prayer all the time should be, be able to receive. Even I regardless of who the manager is. We got we got Pastor Keish on here. It's not the age. What's up, man? It's it's not the age. It's the anointing. Yes, Lord. Yes. I'm studying the preparation yes. of the heart of the person that reaches others. You sure know what to say. Yep. I don't give a flying yep. flip. You have to daycare. Speak a word. <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> my hands go go up, and if it's accurate, I might sow a seed. Listen, Listen. Shaw, bye bye. Sure know what to say. So Harvey comes first time, and so now fast forward. Um. Harvey's gone. Help, Lord. Help, Lord. Park's gone. I, Help, Lord. I'm, I'm done with church. <laughs> right. So, both. So, so Harvey leaves. I mean, Pastor Park uh, leaves Riverside, relocates, and then Harvey leaves. So now we have this person who's been on this journey, right? 
five, this is about six or seven years now. She in the Holy Ghost now. And two of her leaders leave within years of each other. Now she's done with church. Bring us up to yeah. speed. <laughs> Twin said not done. You know she was done. Twin, you know Twin. She, my I was done with it. I was done. And, and, and not because it wasn't because of like what they did or whatever. It was like, I ain't about to go through this stuff again. Okay. I was I'm like, because be, mainly because Harvey was such like, he was the pinnacle for me at that time. Mm. And I'm like, these fools ain't about to be like him. Okay. Listen. Harvey gave the keys to a building. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we ran ministries in that mug. I did business. Like he was he blessed me in all the aspects of my life that mattered to me. Listen. And I was able to filter it through the church. Okay. And perfect. Perfect. Okay. Like you couldn't get because, no better. Because, because we had a leader. Yep. That was a visionary vision and he he listen he had workshop like he did not play about that vision okay he, and one he thing i'll say about a visionary leader lord help my soul because i am one a visionary leader can see and then if you mix that with i do believe to even be a visionary leader you have to have that prophetic gift i i believe that because a part of your vision comes from seeing what's up ahead, thinking ahead, mm -hmm. being a mm -hmm. futuristic thinker and planner. Mm -hmm. And not only did he have that, that also came with the impartation. Yep. He sold that into us as well. Yep. Right? Yes. And how many people are looking at churches like, look, I'm looking for a one-stop shop. And if the church is this thing that God is his house, surely I should be able to not just utilize my gifts in his house, but have them maximized and have them cultured and cultivated. Listen. That right there. What you said. What you, you can said. we cannot keep preaching a serve, serve, serve gospel. And you don't want to so so so, baby. I'm done. Baby, I'm up. Watch. May hit. Listen. And I'm why, over that. I can honor. Over. I can honor. I honor leadership across the board. I honor mm -hmm. what Harvey did, and we've never even talked about this with him. No. Nope. Because it was like, look, I ain't stand you. But right. I ain't gonna be the only right. visionary leader either. You finna be a visionary right. leader too. Yeah, and I'm gonna make yep. sure you, you. I'm gonna make sure you want because I'm gonna pour into you. I'm gonna cultivate yep. your gift, and I'm not yep. just gonna do it spiritually. I'm also gonna show you practically how to prepare yep. your destiny. Yep. Yep. Do you know the power in that when you now so now impartation now shifts into transferring here it is of anointing Woo. oh my god <laughs> oh harvey and i don't want to make this about person harvey but that might well call like this, this i don't care what no man to say that might well he was and then again he was 12 doing this lord forbid Absolutely. the leader he 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 is now he is now, not was, is, mm -hmm. or could be, he mm -hmm. is. I speak that over his right. life because the reality mm -hmm. of it is, the reality of it is, again, that's what we both needed because God was also at the same time birthing us as visionary leaders. Yep. <laughs> that's why we can't just sit around stale nothingness. Y'all ain't tell me, what's the vision? Hey, hey, question, <laughs> question. Dude, I asked that a million times. I know niggas like, you ain't even see. Where we going? Where we going? <laughs> and then, and then, and then, because I don't mind being on your team. I don't mind being on your team. But when it's time for you to coach me, will you coach me? Will you? Absolutely. All right. right. Okay, yep. so. Harvey I'm done, Y'all, I ain't fooling with you, 
I'm done so trying for the clothes. Literally, hold on. This is literally. I'm gonna show how prophetic this is. Before she, I don't know if I should say it now or later. Y'all, listen. Say listen. Before she go there, this is about what 2018, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. No, 2017. Yeah, right. 2017. 2017. 2017. Y'all yeah, check this end. out. Y'all, this this was my Facebook status. This is how prophetic this is. Don't play with me and don't play with God because I don't play with God's people, his word, or him. She saw that. April 15, she for real. April 15, 2018, at 8 12 p.m. Wow. April 15, 2018, at 8 12 p.m. Here's my status. Some of my closest peeps don't go to church in this season. And I carry this new yet heavy reality personally because they once did and now question mark. Some trusted me enough to follow and I wrestle with did I fail them? I know God will lead them accordingly, but you know, but some, but, but sometimes, but you sometimes are left with the question, what role did I play? And what if anything can I do about it now? Hashtag self check. So that's one of many reasons that I'm not playing games with folks. I walk my little thick tail in some spots and I walk my little thick tail right back out. God, please don't make me go back there. And I'm not, and I'm praying for the souls that's up in there. Souls on the line. And some of them I happen to know personally, not everybody is at their house because they don't know slash love God. Some people are at the house because they love him too much to not disrespect and dishonor his house. Y'all out here playing and people out here dying. Help me, God. Listen. That was two years ago on today. My friend is done with church. Now tell him where you at now. I am in. <laughs> I'm in church now. The God is back at church, y'all. Listen. You talking about the prayers of a friend? You, you talking about the prayers of a the right? Go ahead, friend. I'm done. Did she freeze? Hold on, y'all. She done froze on me because I'm hyped. Hold on. Come on back, King Gate. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let's get her back. Hold on. Let me see if I can get her back. Mm, 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 mm. That was good. Hold on, like. See if I can get her back. She froze. I, I I know. Hold on, April. Let's see if I can get her back. See that we buy you devil in the name of Jesus. Hold on, y'all. She gonna let's try to get her back. Hold on. Ooh, that was good. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Right when right when she said it, y'all, we gotta wait till she come back. Right when she said it, uh, right when she said it. Right when she say it, literally, hold on, y'all. I'm back in church is when, guess what? It pops off. We buy that devil up in Jesus' name. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. She saying she's still on link, but y'all don't see her do. Hold on, y'all. Let's give her a moment. Ooh, that was good. Lord have mercy. There. There you go. There we go. Hold on, hold on. Three, two, one. There you go. Shout bye bye. Don't play with us today, <laughs> devil. Huh? They're not. Right, you finna so get So back, back at church. Come on. Back at church. Back at church. Um, start with last summer, 2019 summer. Yeah, I had finally said we. Uh, okay, time time to go back to church. Cause mm -hmm. life for me ain't no crystal stair. Okay. Oh, life. I know. At the time, life wasn't popping. Okay. 
So, <laughs> although I want no church kid, I do know where my help is at. Even if I didn't be, even though I wasn't in the building, I still knew I was being out of order at that moment. Okay. I ain't had no real reason to be out of church other than just being lazy. Okay. So time to find a new church home. And so I made a list of the churches. I moved in a new area where I'm going to go because I like to be close, preferably. Um, And the church that I ended up choosing to attend, well, most of the churches I went to were you know, traditional big churches, you know, the ones everybody else went to. I went to a couple that I hadn't been to, but they were all great preachers. They do great ministry. Because at this point, what I, I know what I want in a church now. I, it's not like superficial things to me anyway. Like I need a church who believed in women, <laughs> uh, leadership, and not just who believe it and say it, but your actions, what your fruit showing that because you have women leaders in your church who are not just in the women's ministry leader or over the food or over the kids. Ooh, okay. So I needed someone to show that they had uh, women leaders who believed in women leaders and who actually, you know, uh, ordained or whatever that process women leaders in their church. Um, I needed a church that. Not only wanted me to serve, 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 but also wanted to pour, pour, pour into me and my business and whatever else I had going on. Who was willing, and I put on here, um, they were willing to allow me to have space to create. Because I like to create programming and things like that. So that had to be an option as well. Because again, Harvey set the stage for what I wanted and needed. And I needed it. They had to have Bible study um, as a priority. What go back? Say okay. that again. What? Which one? What you just said about setting the stage. She oh, once she did oh. hit that crossroad of having that pastoral dynamic, the stage is now set. I Standard. can't go back to mediocrity, average, uh half cocked. The stage is set. As the stage is set around leadership, how I see leadership. It's set around biblical study. It's set around spiritual growth. I'm eating five-course meals. I'm seeing Same. ministry at a five-star level. I can't yep. go back. I can't. Come I on. cannot. I need Get preaching. I didn't mean to have holler. That's okay. I need this preaching to relate to my life. In a meaningful way, I I, I got the hat. I got the hat a steak, okay? Because I didn't see something. Because I didn't see something. It ain't nothing like seeing that thing. It's one thing she said. It's one thing when it's ambiguous, like I don't get no good, 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 good. It's a whole nother beast when you get revelation. Like uh uh, I've seen what's possible. So miss me with the fifty percent. I've seen. Excellence. I've seen, and that doesn't mean the people were perfect and excellent. Right. But I've seen, I've seen what I was praying for back in Atlanta. I've seen right. It. Go. Mm. And it was stuff I didn't know that I wanted Money. or needed. And I'm like, oh yes, give me that. That's it. I want that, that too. Came through who? Harvey. The leader. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Listen, Listen. Yes. are y'all missing these nuggets? The leader showed yep. me two things. A, ooh, two things. That's it. That's what I've been looking for. That's what I've been sensing. That's what I've been praying for. But then the pastoral leadership also showed me I ain't even know about that. I want right. that too. Give me that too. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Listen. Yes. yes. And listen, another thing that has this, I joined this new church. It caused a little bit of conflict in my house. Okay. I, yeah. I live with my boyfriend. We live together and he wanted to go to a traditional church and I did. Wow. I want, I, listen, that's that spirit of audacity I'm talking about that that's I was willing to allow this discord for this to temporary discord because I'm not about to go and deal with no mediocre church no more because my life on the line at the time I'm going through some things I need somebody who can help me about this thing and then when I get up out of I need somewhere where I can flourish and help somebody else 
Listen, I'm not about to do it. I love you, boo. We're going to have to figure it out some, something else. But it's, I'm not about to do it. I ain't about to go to nothing that is at stake in filet mignon, okay? So it was a little discourse for a little while, but he got over it, okay? Um, he ain't he ain't joined yet. But God, God. Listen, so we, listen, though. We lift that so up I on the feed tonight. Huh? I said we lift that up before God on the feed. Absolutely. So, God. but I, <laughs> listen. So, um, I joined the well. Kill more, Pastor Kill more. I went to her church the first so time. Ask, so where are you, TJ? She just the told first you time I went, laid out. First time. I don't know Kia. I don't know her. I don't know her beyond, you know, just oh, she was a well, she well, I didn't know she was a pastor, not a motivational speaker. I don't know what she was at first. And then I knew she started was going to school and trying to then she started this church. I knew that much. I'm like, okay, well let's see what she's talking about. Okay? Go to the church. Over. I was like, baby, this woman that preached my whole life. Whole life. The first time I went to church and then they had, you know, the online stuff. Um, and I love this whole thing that she was having online worshipers. So people who didn't even live in Memphis are members of our church because if that's the experience that they can have, she was willing to give it to them. She was open. And it was just this new thing that I was just like, I love it. It's innovative to me. It's strategic. I just love the whole. And so the first day, the first time I visited, she cut off the, the stream because uh, you know, she was led to, to uh, lay hands on us, put oil on us. So I go stand in the line like I'm a member. I'm finna go listen. Because again, <laughs> I don't care how old you are. I'm going through some things. <laughs> you done preached my whole life. I'm finna stand in line in these hills, okay? Listen. And the line was long. The man said, Y'all ain't talking about nothing. I'm finna go <laughs> get this off. I'm finna go on this line. Get him in line and the um later because she or she ended up ordaining <laughs> probably within the first couple of times I went, she ordained a preacher uh, another woman while I was there. I wasn't even a member yet. Okay, God, check. Ordained her right then and there, like because whoever was had been running and they started their whole little behind the scenes journey or whatever. So but she got up there prayed. Soon as uh, Pastor Kia, I got up to her, she was like, oh, Jesus. And next thing you know, she started speaking some of my life. So, God. I'm, well, first of all, I was already done when uh, Elder uh, Purdy was praying. That's what Tasha food. just said. Tasha said, I came over there one Sunday and Elder Purdy prayed for me. Lord Jesus, that prayer was 100% prophetic. Listen. Done before I even got the pastor kill because of Elder Purdy. Yes. Then I got the pastor kill and she like, whoa. I'm like, oh God, what? Oh God, what you telling her? You know, like, what's going on? And I'm done. And but when she got done with me, she like, hey, get her phone number. Like, cop, put her on the list right now. Cop. I'm like, I ain't no man. What we doing? Like, I'm done in the corner, but anyway, they get my information. Guess what? Pastor Kia texts me. We have a whole conversation with text. We're talking about the anointing. You got anointing of your life. She tell me God spoke to her and it was just overwhelming when he saw when she saw me. She don't know me. We're not friends. She doesn't know me. I don't know her. We ain't I ain't never met her in my life. That was the first time I ever seen her in person. How would a prophetic? I was like, and then let me, then what's even, what she said over me, somebody else had already said over me too. I was like, God, you, you, you're the realist. Okay. I was like, all right, this is a done deal. My boyfriend, he was out of town. So I was like, man, when I tell him when I get home, I can't wait to tell him. My dad was like three churches that day. It was over. I'm done. I'm done looking. I ain't going nowhere else. And then well, we had the little, he wanted to go a few more other places. I obliged him for 
just to say I did it. What feeling it? And then when I joined, I didn't tell him. <laughs> That's where conflict came. But your girl was happy. Okay, I am happy at the well. Okay, um, this transition with the coronavirus and quarantine, piece of cake. The transition because she was already doing streaming anyway. Um, she doesn't like the tithing, like being a joyful giver. Like you, like I really feel that. Even though I, I, I was going through a whole storm last year, um, and one of the things I kept praying, God, I can't wait to tithe. Like I can't wait to be able to give a full tithe. And I get to a church who do a whole series about soul giving. So she's like, it was just, and, and she's not like harping down on you about you giving, like it, 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 you didn't feel like you was getting punished or getting whipped or whatever, because you couldn't tithe or you didn't tithe or whatever. And I love it. And then in addition to that, she was doing outreach, like from day one, she's a startup church. We were having church at White Station High School Auditorium, her old alma mater. Laying folks out, she still. This is early on. She could, uh, you know, uh, sewing into people's businesses. Anything that she needed for the church, she made sure. Um, she asked a member first to see if they had the a business or whatever, and she paid them to do it versus going on the outside paying, or it versus just asking everyone to just give, give, give their stuff for free. Although, of course, people are giving and pouring into the church, but she is equally pouring out. And I love it. And I need it. And it's it's in my baby. Like take it, give it. And I, you know, I, when I when I get my money, I go ahead and tie. I don't care what they don't, I don't wait the Sunday. Let me go. So many things have transpired, and we and and and, uh, and again we left out. Of course, you're talking about now we're in like year seven, right? Of just Kingsgate TJ's journey from Atlanta back here into ministry and how. Now that God has positioned her and placed her um, and settled her, because that's so important. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and 10 that God will um, strengthen, establish, restore, and settle you, right? Yes. Um, and sometimes we be looking for God to move, um, and we're still in a transition state. But when God settles you, oh, mm -hmm. it's over. He'll bless you even as you transition. But when he really like settles you in, it's a wrap. So we've, oh. we've been able to see this journey. Um, and the and this notion of this audacity piece, the spirit of audacity. And TJ never giving in to the carnal conflicts when it came to the church. Um, and the experiences and what she was exposed to, she kept digging. She kept mm -hmm. like, I, okay, I know what's more. I know what's more. That ain't me. Okay, bye. She didn't waste a lot of time either trying to figure out why I want oh, that several times. Okay, that wasn't it. Okay. He ain't mm -hmm. it. Okay. She, okay, bye. Right? Because mm -hmm. a time is too precious. We don't even have yeah. that kind of time. If something ain't it, okay, bye. Next God. And because mm -hmm. she always stayed nimble and she mm -hmm. always stayed flexible. And ready to pivot so much yep. so yep. even in this last dimension or this last chapter deciding to make a move um, that did cause some conflict um, internally but believing that she truly had heard the voice of God and I always tell her this at the end of the day God, obedience grants access yep. and God will handle the chatter God will mm -hmm. handle the clutter God mm -hmm. will handle the discourse. You do what God said. This where we are at in 2020. Uh, I love and she's as she said at the beginning. She comes up with these prophetic declarations every year. She didn't know that they were prophetic initially, but they're prophetic declarations. <laughs> this prophetic insight. This prophetic gifting, right? And the mm -hmm. seriousness instructed me to lay hands on her and impart into her. And I share with her as I move out of the way, God is going to position you forward. Cause she mm -hmm. at the time was still like behind the scenes. And for the most part, that is where her, where her vibe is. But 
the seriousness in so to now see this to now even hear this conversation is a fruit of that it's a fruit of obedience um mm -hmm. it's a fruit of not being afraid like forget all that friend you got to wear it for your friend you need to give it to them because their deliverance could be in your mouth yep. and i and i and i and i sit with this and i'm sitting with where we're at and it's so amazing because i feel like we take in relationships for granted we take who people send yeah. our way for granted. We take divine encounters for granted. We really don't realize, even if it's just a it's see, it was seed form then. Now it has sprouted up. Mm -hmm. It was just a seed. Yep. seed. Yep. All of that, the truth trail, our talk, yep. all of that was a seed, seed, mm -hmm. seed, seed, seed. And so we didn't talk about it, but the enemy tried to get in the way of mm -hmm. this dynamic. That's why you got to know God. And you have to be so tuned in to know, oh, that's a trick of the enemy. Devil use a lot. Yeah. And the, the enemy didn't win ultimately because here we are.